Um, my, na my name is Morris Pascal. Mr. Pascal, um, you're one of the greats. You played here on this field. Um, what was it like to play here uh, during your career? It was, uh, it was surrogation at the time and stuff, but I got to know a lot of the, the Boston Brave Pittsburgh players and stuff, and I really enjoyed talking to them, but it was a good time for me. Now, in your day, there was segregation, but the Nine Devils had a lot of talent. Can you talk about the ball club you played on? You no. were only 16 when you got there. No. One of the best guys was just like a father to me, Son Copeland, Wayne Armstead, Elijah Barber, Buck Walker. They was great ball player, but they didn't get a chance to play. But I learned a lot of stuff from them. I mean a lot. They, if I wouldn't be able to go to scholarship at Florida a University in Tallahassee. But I learned the stuff I got my education behind them. It was tough, but we played through it. So you went on to FAMU and played, you're a Rattler? Yes, sir. Played Shaw Stock up there. Jake Gates the football player, but I, a lot of guys had to go to Canada to play. One of my favorite balls was Hank Aaron. I played brother-in-law, his first wife from Jacksonville, but he's from Mobile, Alabama. But I got a chance to know some of his family. So Alonzo, Jake, Jake Gaither was the coach at, at FAM, right, the football, football coach. Yes, um, tell us about that baseball program. Coach Mo, we had a good day. Play school like Tuskegee, Alabama a and North Carolina, Allen University, all through the South. The rally we was good. Hal McCray, played with Kansas City, went there. We had a guy named uh, Mudcat Grant. Played a little while before he, he, he signed a contract. He didn't get about 1500 but the guys didn't make that much money like they make now. But they were great ball players. What kind of money did, did they pay you guys around here? Probably about 30 or $40 a game. And they came when they played, they didn't make no more than $35,000 or $40,000 a year. They had to get a part-time job, Mickey Mantle, all those guys. But they got television revenue now all over the country. That's why the guys make so much. It's not an easy game. You know, the ball is smaller now, but the bat's a lot better. And the athletes better nutrition and stuff. Now, what was it like to come back here today and be honored? How special was it? Oh, man, you're talking about it was a wonderful day. I mean a wonderful day. I got a good support group doing volunteer work with St. Vincent of Paul. I got a lot of the, uh, saw some of the old players. My goddaughter, a friend here, just like a, a brother to me, his daddy, learned me a lot. Son Copeland, see that uh, jersey right there? Yeah. They taught me a lot of stuff. What's your earliest memory of this field? Uh, I know the name changed, but in the exterior, things that look different. But I really remember when, when uh, uh, Hank Aaron, Earl, Earl Toggs on first base, Juan Spahn, Lou Bidette, Johnny Sane was pitching, Dale Crowley was catching. Beautiful, nothing like it is now. Guys for lunch has egg salad sandwich and milk for lunch. Now these guys got steaks and everything now. Yeah. I started out at the clubhouse and chasing baseballs and stuff. But I, I got a good experience from those players. They didn't make no money much. They were a hell of a ball player. Roberto Clemente, what do you remember about him and, and what was it like? Uh, what was he like in those days? One of the nicest guys I ever met. A hell of a hill. They played right field for snack. And I was a tragedy when he got killed coming taking stuff at, uh, to some of the friends over on the plane. And the storm messed him up. He was one of the greatest ball players was out, Hank Aaron and all those guys. Loving the guy. He told like a big brother. He was like a big brother to me. What would you tell young guys coming up now that they have all these opportunities? What would you tell them about the game of baseball? Stay focused. Number one, get an education. Listen to your parents. Stay away from drugs because it's beautiful now. But now you can get through the gate. They got school at the Middle Republican all over for young kids now. But if you think it's hard, ball player is, is not an easy game, but you can set your mind, set goals for yourself. But don't forget about that education. That's the key. Or everybody can't make the major leagues in different places. When you went on the road, what was it like on the road? Um, 
getting a place to sleep and getting something to eat and everywhere you went you know there was different kind of people and well, everybody wasn't happy to see you no we couldn't go to we couldn't go to restaurants but we had a lot of black people they would cook food up for us we took a shower the whole sheets up and stuff we couldn't go to the bathrooms and stuff but it was one guy his father was white he would go into the stores and get food for us to make lunch we parked by the block off the prank and the people wouldn't hardly let you get gas and nothing. They used the N-word a lot. When we went again, they throw rocks at them and stuff. But my grandmother used to pray for me. I'm not asking you to win this game for Pascal. We give them the strength to turn back home. It was real rough. Things have changed. It's beautiful. Number six, when you went into the games, what was the competition like? What was the game of baseball like in those days? And how good were guys? These guys could steal bases, hit, like a, a, a ball player you'd sell. That's just like a singer, talking about blunt, blunt. His father was one of the greatest ball players I'll ever see, Son Cook. He hit. They, they were talking about Jackie Robinson, he was a hell of a ball player. But they had a guy like Homestead, uh, with the Homestead like, with better ball players, but he had education. He took a lot of stuff. But he was a real good guy, all of them. Homestead, Great Kansas City, Monas, all those teams. Buck O'Neill was just honored over here in Sarasota. They put his uh, picture up on the, on the building. Um, what do you remember about uh, Mr. O'Neill? He was a hell of a ball player. He was a hell of a ball player, a good gentleman, and like helped a lot of young ball players. He went through a lot, but he was a gentleman to me. I love him, but he went through a lot of stuff, but he didn't let that stop him. He was good in the community, and he was well liked it all over. A wonderful man. I never will forget him. When you come here today and you see people all ages, all creeds, all backgrounds, how special is it in their honoring you for the game that you play? It's real special because a lot of my support group here, they don't they care what color you are now. The game is here now and a lot of people are good now all over. That's why you see a lot of things you would have saw when I was coming up, but you see it now. Soul Brothers and stuff, they're real nice. I got a good support group here now. And it's a lot different, but it's wonderful. Who's your favorite team these days? Well, I don't really have it. Most of the, I, I start out with the Dodgers because, because of Jackie Robinson. Pittsburgh Pirates because of Kamini. Boston Bray because of Hank Aaron. But I knew all the players. I know the position and everything. Yeah. But now, I just keep up with either team that I pick it up. The Yankees all right, you know. And, uh, most of the Pittsburgh because of Kamini. Now some of these pictures you have are special. There's a black and white picture. It says Midland defeats uh, Borger 10-9 on Sunday contest. How special is that that picture there, that black and white picture? That's your baseball team. You no, know, I didn't play with those guys. It was real special. They was older than me. They was older, but I knew all of them. I was a bad boy for them. I was about 10 years old, but I knew all of them. They were older. Buck Walker Marker, Son Copeland, that was his father. Wayne went on stead, Elijah Barber. So many of them. They was great ball players, but they couldn't get through. The, they couldn't get through. A lot of them played Class A ball, but they were treated so bad that they had to come back and get a job because they didn't make no money out of it. It was tough. The history of baseball here in, in Bradenton and in this area, how special is it and, and how important is it to you personally? Well, you still got to go a, long, a ways in Bradenton because it's not known for, for, small, for small and stuff. And it's still, but it's still got to go away, but, it, but it's a good spring training thing for uh, the Pittsburgh Pirates now and this team here. But it's pretty good. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to say today in a report uh, when you talk about your career and coming back and being honored today? It's, the day been a beautiful day with me because I thought this would never happen. I got a good support group and all the staff here was wonderful for me. I never will forget this day and I never forget the staff and I've really been blessed to be part of it. And thank you, thank you very much. Do the jerseys, do they remind you of when you played and do the jerseys look like the jerseys you guys wore? No, they don't look like the jerseys like this because the material is a lot better and stuff. You know, we, the bats are a lot better now, the balls are small and tight, everything changed.
but I'm, I'm, I'm still living. I'm glad to be part of it. Thank you very much. How special was that the Negro League and, and the Florida League in those days? It was special, man. It was special because I'd never seen so many great black players. I used to look at some of the guys, they think, man, oh, man. I see uh, the guy for the Yankees, uh, Shawstop. A lot of the guys that I see playing ball now, that stuff came so easy to us. Man, I'm telling I said, how could we didn't make the major and stuff? Because everybody was, I mean good. That's why you see a lot of guys from Men in Republic, Puerto Rico, and, and Blackman, uh, 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 Hank Aaron and all those guys. I know a lot, I got books on all of them. That's why they were hitting so much, but they had clear better than they were. Josh just hit more home runs in, in uh, uh, Beirut. A lot of them stealing base was nothing. Home plate wasn't nothing, they steal. You don't want to see guys doing it. I saw one guy for the Tampa Rays steal home plate. It took me back to Jackie Robinson, the World Series with Jackie Robinson. Recently, they've decided to accept some of the uh, stats uh, from the Negro Leagues right. and take them into Cooperstown. Right. When you hear about people getting their rightful credit and props going into Cooperstown, right. what goes through your mind? It goes to my mind. It goes to my mind because I thought I would never see it. Like my uncle, I didn't know him. Satchel Page, all those guys, uh, uh, Bell, and so many I can give the name and stuff. Boy, you talking about great, 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 great. They beat some of the major league teams, Homestead Grays and Kansas City Mona. They played. They beat some of the Yankees and all that. But the guy for Vance Rickard for the Dodgers was strong enough to get Jack. They had a lot of people way better than Jackie, but Jackie was educated, had the mindset to go through all that trouble and stuff. A lot of players. His father should have been an amazing. Son Courtney, one of the bad hit, and we know more about 170. Good power and everything. They the one got me going. And I, I know a lot to them guys, I know a lot. You said there was an all-star game here. Right. Tell me about that. All-star game was guys from a town and they, uh, they voted the outstanding players. His father played an all-star game. I wasn't old enough. I wasn't. I was still about 12 or 13 years old at the time. But I remember uh, Choo Choo, a lot of the guys. They was good. You see them guys playing now. They were just as good as them guys you see in the major league. But they, the door wasn't open. Now the door is open. So when you walked on that field and you were 16, what happened? Man, I'm, to look at the field now, oh man, look at the infield and everything. Look at the beautiful stadium and stuff. We was 12, we used to be uh, chasing baseballs all that, sell them to two. I was about 12 or 13 years old. I knew Earl Talks and I knew they, for lunch, them guys had to have egg salad sandwich and milk, the ball player. Nothing like this, like all this, they had nothing. They had to get part-time jobs. Hank Aaron, all of them guys. We made about 25 or 30,000. Yeah, now you got to make million because of television revenue. Were they bringing in players from, from Dominican Republic and Cuba yeah. in places like uh, Puerto Rico? Yeah, the doors open now. It was good when I was playing. All analysts appeared with the Giants. Come in with, with Pittsburgh and stuff. You see all those guys on TV talking. The door is open, they got schools over there now. They was good when I was coming up. They're like, I don't care if it's football or basketball, they was good then. The door is open, you're gonna see a lot of people that look like me.